We continue to follow breaking news we first told you about earlier on ONNTV.com. The FBI announced this morning that it has foiled a plan to blow up a bridge in northeastern Ohio. And now five men are in federal custody this evening. Authorities released photos of the five self-described anarchists. We have continuing coverage now of a foiled bomb plot near Cleveland. The suspects remain in jail tonight after the FBI says they tried to blow up the Route 82 bridge in Brecksville. Only the undercover FBI was in on the whole thing, and there was never any real danger. As Josh Boost with our Cleveland affiliate WEWS reports, agents say the men were angry with corporate America. Good evening, Ohio. Thanks for joining us for Ohio Tonight. I'm Mike Kohlmeyer. And I'm Sandra Cole. President Obama returned to Ohio today to talk about the economy in the Cleveland suburb of Shaker Heights. It comes just one day after the first GOP test in Iowa as the wheels of campaign 2012 really get rolling. Well, and Kristen Severance joins us live on scene now with the details. Kristen? The president said we can't drill our way out of our dependence on oil. He even took a jab at Republicans. He said during the days of Christopher Columbus, Republicans would have been charter members of the Flat Earth Society. Yeah, I mean, the president wants to draw the narrative here that he... We are hearing more from students inside Chardon High School during today's deadly shooting. High school junior Heather Ziska says she was outside the cafeteria when she and other students began hearing popping noises in a nearby hallway. She says a boy she recognized as a fellow student then opened fire in the cafeteria. Freshman Danny Comert says he was just about to leave for his first period health class Monday when he saw the gunman open fire. He says fellow student Daniel Parmenter was trying to get under a table to protect himself and shield his face. Parmenter later died from his injuries. And another student says she witnessed a teacher put on a bulletproof vest during the shooting and pull a wounded student into a nearby classroom to protect them. Once again, the alleged gunman is in custody tonight, and we'll keep you posted on this developing story right here on ONN and ONNTV.com. We interrupt your afternoon programming for the latest on the Ohio State Buckeyes in New Orleans. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sandra Cole. And I'm Mike Kohlmeyer. Let's go right to New Orleans. Right now, the Buckeyes are addressing the media in a live news conference. Thad Mata is now fielding questions. Let's listen in live from New Orleans. All right, you've been watching live coverage from New Orleans. The news conference today, a day before the Buckeyes' big Final Four matchup with Kansas. The Kansas Jayhawks, a team that beat the Bucks earlier this year. That was all the way back in, in December, and that was without the man that you just saw, Jared Sullinger. So Kansas beat Ohio State without Jared Sullinger. Is it a different game altogether tomorrow? I think so. Who knows? We'll see. I think it should be a completely different game. Yeah. And they did lose 78 to 67, so they didn't get killed. Right. But they were beat without Jared Sullinger. So this time around, they've got their big guy. So it'll be very interesting. Kim Jacobs started out as a patrol officer for the city of Columbus in 1979 and climbed the ladder to become the first female police chief 33 years later. She says it's a tremendous honor but breaking the glass ceiling also means pressure. The expectations are way up here and you can't be the first female chief and screw it up. <laughs> but Jacob says she's up to the task and has hit the ground running. Her top priority is curbing the rising crime in the city, specifically gun violence, domestic violence, property crimes and drunk driving. She also wants to be more visible in the community and work with residents on creating service standards for the police department. You tell us what the grade system should be. There are very few cities in the country that have service standards for police, but I think that we need to start working on those. Jacobs also wants to increase the number of women on the police force. I think women are good for policing because we we have a way of, of talking to people, knowing that we're not necessarily always going to um, have the, the muscle to get a six foot four, 250 pounder in our car, but we can talk them right in there. In her personal life, Jacobs has had a partner for seven years and has two grown sons who are very proud of their police chief mother. When the news was getting ready to get out and all that kind of stuff, they would send me to awesome, you know, and you know, congrats and all that. So they, yeah, they've been right there with me and um, they've been great. My younger son wants to actually become a police officer, so. 
Jacob says she loves the city of Columbus, and her goal is to make it safe for all of its residents. I want everybody to just feel like we're all part of the same community and all interested in the same things and being able to enjoy the entertainment, enjoy the outside and walk around where you don't feel like you're going to get mugged and you know, shot and all that. Jacob says she hopes to serve her community as police chief for many years to come. For the Ohio News Network, I'm Sandra Cole. Beth Richmond has taught for 29 years. 12 of those years have been here at Upper Sandusky Middle School as the sixth grade language arts teacher. She was moved to tears when we interrupted her class for a special announcement. On behalf of the United Insurance, Westfield and the Ohio News Network, we present you with a gift basket as the Teacher of the Month. Thank you so much. Oh, bless you. Thank you so much. Teaching runs in her family. Mrs. Richmond's mother is still teaching after 52 years, and her daughter is also a teacher. I can't imagine any other job in this world that would be more rewarding. You know, I truly put my feet on the floor every morning and look forward to coming to work, look forward to seeing the kids, look forward to making a difference. Her students say she does make a difference. Everybody that walks out of that room should at least say, I learned a lot of stuff from Mrs. Richman. In my mind, she's one of the best teachers I've ever had. To me, I really like her because she's a really supportive teacher and she really cares. Principal Jim Wheeler says walking into Mrs. Richmond's class is like walking into a hug. The kids know immediately she cares about them. She's going to drive them, beg them, plead with them, cajole them, hug them, scold them, whatever it takes to get their best, and she's not going to settle for anything less. Mrs. Richmond is also a cancer survivor, and she taught the whole time she was battling the disease. Use that as an opportunity to let kids see that, you know, we're all going to face things that are hard and that you can learn something from that and that you can really find out how strong you really can be if you need to. Mrs. Richmond is a very strong person and teacher, and we congratulate her on being our Teacher of the Month. For the Ohio News Network, I'm Sandra Cole. Back in 1853, the farming community of Hilliard developed around the railroad, and you can see that firsthand by visiting the historical village where the old train station now sits. There's also a red caboose that was recently moved to the village and completely restored. What's so unique about that is we have different events in there, such as Santa in the caboose, and the kids love it because they actually get to see what a caboose looked like in the 1800s and how people lived back then. Tim Woodruff was born and raised in Hilliard and loves his hometown. He's a volunteer at the historical village and actually attended the little church that now sits in the middle of the village. When I was a child, uh, the church sat out uh, at the corner of Roberts and Alton Darby, right catty corner, catty corner from our farm. And uh, uh, my parents started me and my brother and sister uh, in that church. The village also includes a cabin, a one-room schoolhouse, a museum, and even a covered bridge. Christy, tell me how the covered bridge came about in the historical village. Well, the Franklin County Engineer's Office um, salvaged some of the wood from the Ashbrook covered bridge, and then they came here and reproduced the lattice um, design, which was back in the 18th century, and placed it here at the historical village oh, at Weaver Park. So now you have a covered bridge. Yes, exactly. Not far from the village is Hilliard Station, the community's historic center, where Old Hilliard Fest is held every September. You'll also find the First Responders Park Memorial here, a tribute to all those who were first on the scene on 9-11, and where you can see an actual flagpole from Ground Zero. Old Hilliard is also home to a new business, Bella Capelli Salon and Day Spa. Owner Carla Larson Miller fell in love with this historic community and its people. It's the warmness, it's, they'll help. I mean, they will come to my rescue if I need it. I mean, there is just the people. It's, it's so warm in Hilliard. Hilliard is just a great place to have a business. The residents of Hilliard are proud of their excellent rated schools, their six mile rail to trail and 22 city parks. Hilliard is known as a family-friendly community, featuring the Family Aquatic Center and the Franklin County Fair. 
But those who live here say the best thing about Hilliard is its small town charm. For the Ohio News Network, I'm Sandra Cole.